What is your thoughts on uh, licensing of, uh, you know, like maybe college logos or sporting teams and stuff like that? Do you guys do much with that in my Amazon guy? In terms of clients that hire my Amazon guy, I would say licensing is, is minuscule. Maybe two or three clients at any given time have a licensing deal. And that's generally because uh, when you go into licensing, you're, you're basically choosing, I'm going to give up some of my margin for a higher conversion rate. And, and so you don't have a lot of margin to get assistance and help, but your conversion rate is higher. And so it's pretty rare for, for licensing deals to, to utilize marketing services. They, they're, they're basically hiring an agency a la the license uh, mm -hmm. instead. But, but I, I do think it can work, but I think a lot of people underestimate how A, how much time it takes to get the license to begin with, mm -hmm. and B, how much it costs to purchase. Like it is very expensive to buy some licenses, especially if you get like, you know, the NBA or the NFL or college teams, even those, those are some of the most expensive licenses. You know, DC, Marvel, super expensive. Uh, but if yeah. you're just going to license uh, kind of a middle of the road license brand, it can be a lot more competitive. Yeah, something like uh, American soccer teams or something like that. That's getting more popular. I mean, that's coming up. It is, but I imagine compared to NFL and stuff, it's going to be minuscule for that. But maybe you could catch a trend and, and ride those kind of things. Um, but it's an interesting category, I think, because you, you have the built-in marketing for the brand, uh, possibly, assuming you get a good brand that you are... Um, licensing and you're kind of building a moat right because if we go back to your products that got taken down if you had had a license for star wars and uh what other one was it i mean i was doing every movie ip i possibly get my hands on so yeah. starbucks star wars uh stranger things you name it i i had a piece of those yeah so if you if you had a license for that then you would have been fine uh, but they might not have probably wouldn't have let you get away with a lot of things you were trying to do. They wouldn't Cor like, correct. Know, they wouldn't have agreed to parody to begin with. Um, yes. and, and, and also nobody asked me if I had a license, right? So it's not like I, if, even if I did have a license, I couldn't have gone to Amazon and be like, I got a license. They wouldn't have cared. They, they just decided all of a sudden parody is out. Right. And I, I've been buying parody t-shirts online for years. I, you know, my favorite t-shirt, I'm not wearing it today. I'm wearing my mag shirt today, but my favorite T-shirt is is a is a picture of Link with three hearts with an X-ray and you know and it's a parody of of you know Zelda and so combining concepts like Mario and Zelda together and parody and so I I had been in that sector for a decade and I understood it and I knew what was funny I knew what people liked and I, I was a consumer of it and and that's kind of like another tip I'll I'll give uh, people listening to this is stick to what you know, know and understand right mm -hmm. so I'm a chess player if I sold chess sets. I played in the US Open. I, I've, I've beaten some you know, masters before. Right. If I were to sell chess sets, I'd have a huge advantage over the next guy. But at the same time, if I tried to sell bamboo dental floss and I'm not a dentist, I won't be able to speak to the texture and why that keeps my teeth cleaner. I, I, I'm going to lose to the next guy who has that dental background. Uh, you could say the same thing about supplements, MMA. If, if you're a chemist or you're an MMA fighter and you do a supplement, you have a huge advantage. You can speak to that element you can be that you could actually put yourself on the infographics i wouldn't put my mug on an infographic for a supplement nobody wants to look like me so those are the things that i think a lot of people need to learn is sticking to what you understand don't just follow the data tools don't just follow the fidget spinner trends because if you do you're gonna get burned by the trend the trend goes up you make some sales and all of a sudden it falls off a cliff or everybody else is copying because they're following the trend too and using the same data tools you use. But if you stick to what you understand, right, and you make a moat. And I think that's a very, very different successful model.